Yeehaw! Welcome back to Warsaw Fan TV. Yep, we're back. And we are into the action. I can't keep up the accent for long. So uh, let's get off the hat. Whee! It is celebration time, isn't it? Warsaw have new owners. Warsaw have new owners. And that's uh, Trevella are the new owners. And uh, it's all very exciting stuff, isn't it? We, um, we're looking today at the positives and the potential negatives. So... Um, Without further ado, let's have a look, shall we? And um, we will be inviting people onto the channel from quarter past. Um, and then we'll sort of uh, see where we take it with that. Right then, so guys, we've got, amongst others, um, Ben Boynton, um, Matt Jordan, Benjamin Boycott. I already mentioned him. This is what happens when you go live. <laughs> And Ken Polk, Wesley Hill. Um, we've got some uh, some different people coming in. Um, did we see this coming? Well, we kind of alluded to it in some of our videos recently. Um, Nigel Bond leaving the board was definitely a clear sign that Lee Pomlet was preparing for sale. We know from other inputs that um, talk about the ground and buying of the ground. There were some movements there, some questions being asked. So we know things were sort of starting to move there as well. Um, and we perhaps thought that Poundland might be sort of uh, stepping in. But again, that was a great big sponsorship that we're really comfortable with. I did tweet about, uh, I think, the Wolves, Astro Pay. Um, not quite as credible as uh, Poundland, but we're here today to talk about Travella. What do we know about them? Let's, first of all, they're a sports investment company. We know that. And they are looking to purchase the stadium, which takes Jeff Bonta away from everything. In fairness, and a lot of Russell fans have kept away because of that. And uh, with the influx in cash, I would hope a lot of Warsaw fans start to return. Not exactly glory hunters, not at this stage, but um, Warsaw are definitely looking in the upward direction. Um, the guys have said, yeah, they'll get the pur purchase the stadium, um, the Saddlers Club as well. So uh, they're buying all of the land, um, looking for steady investment over the long term, which is good. Um, why they picked Warsaw? Um, there's been a few good questions that they've answered quite well on that. But um, they have sort of given mention of passionate fans and that. But the biggest one for me is the club has been well run financially. And that's what puts Warsaw in the picture to start that dialogue. Um, obviously, with where Warsaw are at the moment, down the bottom of League Two, it does definitely give them great upside potential to sort of uh, move things forward a little bit and sort of show what they can do and how they can progress the club. Um, looking through the people that are joining us, um, Matt Jordan, Vice President... Um, senior VP, Vice President and General Manager of Houston Dynamo FC. What do we know about Houston? Houston or Houston? I think it's the same. Um, seven years he's been there. Previously, Technical Director of CF Montreal. He was four years there. And Matt Jordan was also a professional soccer player. Um, 14 years as a professional footballer. So that's good. Um, he's definitely got extra football credentials, um, football-rated qualifications, US Soccer Federation Pro B coaching license. So um, he's doing all right there. Now, on a slight negative, he was um, Houston Dynamics, Houston Dynamo, rather, 
Um, in the American version of the Champions League, they made the quarterfinal in uh, 2019, which is good. Um, and they were the US Open Cup champions in 2018. So, again, that is very good. But they missed the playoffs for the sixth time in the last seven years and finished bottom of the Western Conference for the last two years running. So that perhaps doesn't speak of massive success. Doesn't speak of massive success. But you've got to bear in mind the Houston Dynamos are a very big concern. And I think anybody that's been to America and knows America, everything is big out there. But they were the tenth by valuation, the tenth biggest club uh, with a value current valuation of two hundred and eighty million dollars. So perhaps as much as they could put money in it, um, maybe not enough to sort of really sort of wildly sort of change their fortunes, as it were. So that's a, a positive and a negative. Um, Matt Jordan, he's got a good football history. Um, he knows the game. He's been involved with football clubs before. So this isn't some Joey who's just come by some money and has decided to buy a club. So uh, fair play to Lee Pomlet. Um, There was approaches from some Asians and some other Americans, which he sort of filtered out. So um, Lee Pomlet, as we've said, has got Warsaw's best interests at heart. And um, I'm sure he's put something in there, the, the whole ground, and when it's purchased, needs to sort of stay together. Um, so we couldn't have a situation where they could sell everything from beneath us. And um, I would think that would be in there. But um, that's one thing that is always a worry. But I think that's quite minimal. Um, before we go on to one point I want to cover, which is change. People are generally very resistant to change. Me. In my day job, um, I'm effectively a change control guy. So um, improving things and changing things is what I do. So uh, I'm very comfortable with change. But I know a lot of people, with all this big investment, as much as we've wanted the investment, it is a big change. It is a big change. Right then, the next guy I want to talk about, Benjamin Boycott the founder and president of Sovereign Football Club for four and a half years. So what do we know about Sovereign Football Club? They don't seem to be in any football league at all because they are a development programme. Um, and we heard in some of the interviews that they are, they are all about the community, which is good. Um, the vision of Sovereign Football Club is bridging the gap between professional football and third world sports programs. So that's a real good, solid reason for getting involved. And I think if they're helping to develop and bring players through from third world countries and that sort of stuff, Warsaw could benefit from that. But I mean, just as, as a culture, I think that's that's a good thing. That's a good thing too. Um, previously, he was president of and chief operating officer of Vapor Industries, so he's familiar with the real world, the non-football world as well. Uh, corporate finance and marketing for Solvaris. Um, he got his master's in business finance and financial risk strategies, um, and he also got a bachelor in marketing and finance. So. Um, this is still quite a young guy, but um, he's, he's a very smart cookie. He's a very smart cookie indeed. Right then, before we go into the others, I've just got a couple of messages I'm just going to cover off. Um, here we go from Oliver. Um, up, the, up the soccer, US, US. <laughs> was till I die. Um, didn't see this one coming. This Didn't see this one coming. Me neither. It was a, uh, we sort of knew Warsaw. We had the feeling Warsaw were preparing for a sale, but we didn't realise. It was sort of um, that close. Um, cash is flowing in. Let's sign 
Mbappe. I think we need to have a reality check, but I'm going to come back on to that in a little bit. Um, Houston are quite good, I think. Um, not from recent results. Um, Jack Anthony Fish, um, attractive investment with 16 years profit up the Saddlers. That's the key. They're coming, they're coming into a team that's used to being financially stable. And I think that is a, a good thing. But I think we also need to temper that and understand that part of their reason for coming in is the fact that Warsaw is stable um, financially. And so I don't think the money is going to be sort of thrown around like confetti. Um, so I don't think that's the arrangement. But more funding will definitely be coming through. And that can only help. Um, but it, it's not going to be, they're not going to be splashing loads of cash. Um, because as we know from Salford, that doesn't necessarily um, get you there. Um, there are many players from South America playing there, um, says Steve. Um, get ready for some Mexicans, Argentinians, Peruvians. How about some uh, Zigo Arenaldi and um, Georgie Leto and uh, Pedro Matias? Can we get back to those kind of uh, times? That would be uh, that would be awesome if it was. Uh, Phil Evans, agree with you on the change. It's uh, we'll never get anywhere doing the same as we've always done. That's correct. Um, Lee Pomley coming in as chairman. He's he's made some changes, but to really make a big change, you need a, a big financial influx, and that's what we've got now. So I say, I don't think we're going to be going crazy on spending money, but we're going to have more stability to be able to push the boat a little bit more, I think, is probably more the case. Um, this could attract Telford, says Jamie Pitt. To be honest, I don't think Telford is a guy we'd want, really. He's had one good season, um, so I don't think he's particularly um, standout. Uh, I think quite a few might disagree with that. I um, think they'll put good money into the club for players this season. Yeah, I think definitely. Um, how they get a goalkeeper and a striker? We don't need any more defenders, says Dave. Good one. Um, my understanding is invest people's money in things to make a profit. So we'll produce the first would be buy a stadium, instant 400,000 savings a year. Jack Anthony Fish, absolutely spot on. Um, that sort of gain on for half a million in rent, um, getting taking care of that certainly gives Warsaw more options with budget, um, regardless of any financial things. Um, big boy, you say this may be one of the richest clubs in League 2, League 1 and Championship. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. There's a lot of big, big money out there. But um, that brings me on to our next guy. Um, Ken Polk. He's the CEO of Arlington Family Offices. He has been for 24 years. And they're talking about £12 billion worth. So he's definitely the financial guy, uh, or the money man, as it were. Um, but I'm sure he's not going to want to be spending that kind of money, um, particularly on a league two club. But I think it's stead, as, um, as Ben said on the interview, Steady progression, steady progression. It's waste time throwing lots of money in, uh, staying in League Two. Want to support the team, give the team good base. As I say, we had a competitive League Two budget previously. Now we've got a very competitive League Two budget. So it is moving in the right direction, but it's not a sort of bankrolling situation like Salford had been, perhaps. Um, the final guy we're going to talk about is Wesley Hill. He's the VP of Operations and Strategic Partnerships at uh, Sovereign Football Club. So, again, he's he's a good one there. He's uh, got the right education as well. Social enterprise effectiveness, bachelor's degree in, listen to this, non-profit public organisational management. These aren't people who are just coming to asset strip and make a quick profit. These are ethical people looking for the long-term benefit of the club. Now, 
that could you have a better could you have a better guy and a better set of people than that? I think we'd struggle to because there's, there's so many egos of people by football clubs and that sort of stuff. And these guys, particularly with the work they're doing with um, a sovereign, um, it's a good ethical, good ethical business. Um, there is a bit of a funny one, actually, with Wesley Hill. He's spent five and a half years with uh, Nike or Nike, whichever you say it, um, partly as a consultant, but also on their wage bill. So next season, are we going to say goodbye to these guys? Maybe we have Nike, Nike shirts next season. You never know, do you? That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. Right then. So a few more in the comments. Let's have a look. I don't think the owners are worth 12 billion, but they have control of that. That's it. But there's money, and if they make any losses, they will have funding pulled, I, I would presume. Yeah, I think having worked with American companies, having worked with American companies, they are financially very astute and react to financial situations. So they will fully want Warsaw to be turning a profit um, or definitely not making a long-term loss year after year. So, yeah, there is money coming in, but it still needs to be run, as it has done for the last 16 years, on a sound financial footing, because that's the way it should be. We know there's other clubs have not done it that way, and they've got into financial difficulties doing it. And I don't think these guys are going to be crazy with the money. People who've got lots of money by them don't generally throw it around unless they're trying to impress people. And um, with the ethical base that these have got, I think that's not the case. So um, it remains to be seen, but everything is stacking up for a really ethical, sound base. Um, they are said in the interview, very academy-focused. So bringing players through the academy and uh, the tie-up with Sovereign, of course, is going to bring potential new players and trialists through. And um, I'm sure there'll be a tie-up with uh, with Houston Dynamics as well. So uh, that's interesting. Um, Liverpool owners worth $5 billion and ours are worth $12 billion. Just because they've got more money doesn't mean to say they want to bankroll a football team. Um, they may, but I think that would be... Um, that would be foolish, I think. I think for Warsaw, we need to have a competitive budget, a very competitive budget, that helps us get promoted into League One. Then we've got a new level of funding to match the increased income from League One. And pushing that on, and if that's working well and Warsaw are getting towards the Championship, then if Warsaw make the Championship, they've got the funds to be able to give us a competitive championship budget. So it's it's about doing things in stages and a long-term plan. I think that's the way to go. Uh, hi, keep up the good work, says John Boys. Thank you. Uh, Steve Kind, um, a couple of stars and some bankroll money. I don't think the owners are worth 12 million, 12 billion rather, but they've control of that. That's it. Uh, just how we can compete at the top end of the table. Steady progress, Anthony. That's spot on. Um, Nobody can get an investment and be guaranteed to win the league. It just doesn't happen. And it's not going to happen in League Two, and it's not going to happen anywhere else. Now, Manchester City, you could say that. But again, that's sort of that's mega, mega money. And that would be crazy to do something like that in League Two. That would just be throwing money away. Um, so I'm sure that's not going to happen. So, uh, as Jack Anthony Fish says, they need to keep profit coming in our all. I think, yes, um, not massive losses would be the order of the day. But if Warsaw can keep profits coming through, then um, that's a happier ship. And I think we know, I think teams like Barnsley, they run on a higher budget and they get more speculative players in and sell that players on. 
and help to balance the books like that. And I think Warsaw can do that. They can sort of bring in higher quality youngsters that they can sort of um, develop and, if need be, sell on and sort of balance the books that way. As I say, again, they're not going to just bankroll Warsaw and uh, just throw throw lots and lots of money in. Um, they've got a bargain, says Vince. Hang on, I think I missed a few there. Yep. Um, hi, George Caswell. He's uh, in the house. Five-year plan champion. Here we come, says Phil. Well, you never know, but it's one of those, isn't it? If Warsaw can get themselves out of League Two, which we all desperately want, um, then with a competitive budget in League One, that's it's starting to become real, isn't it? It's starting to become real that we could have some significant progression. I think at the moment, before this investment came in, if Warsaw had got promoted to League One, we would be struggling to cope against much bigger budgets for the turnover we've got. Um, and with this investment, I think moving into League One would be a, a a comfortable step rather than sort of stepping into another big challenging area. And then Championship, we're into dream territory then, aren't we? If, uh, if Walsh are into the Championship and competing on an even keel with Championship teams, then we really are sort of uh, glory hunters. The glory hunters, the joy is returning, I think. We've had enough pain, haven't we? Um, right then, uh, Jack Andy Fish, Nike, yeah, good one. Um, yeah, as, as Vince said, I think I mentioned this, they've got a bargain. And to be honest, the growth potential from Warsaw, because of how low Warsaw are at the moment, that is that is a, a golden opportunity for them, isn't it? With Hoost, as I say, they're down the bottom of the league and not progressing. But I think Warsaw have got a much better scope being a much smaller club compared to Houston and uh, the two hundred and eighty million dollars, um, so it's it's a project where they can control and grow much easier. I think. Um, Mark C saying, "I'm not getting carried away with this. Nevertheless, I'm feeling quietly optimistic. <laughs> I think we all are, really. I think we can't sort of get too carried away because, as I say, it's not we're not going to be signing uh, Ronaldo." We've got to be signing players within a reasonable budget, albeit a stronger budget. Um, Navy Boy is also, I also think we've got championship facilities, so we've got a massive bargain. Yeah. Uh, Walsall have got very good, uh, very good setup, really. And uh, the stadium was built with add on potential. So if Walsall sort of are into the championship, it could very easily, if Walsall are moving, likely to be going to the championship extending the stadium to sort of increase uh, the turnover and the attendance is definitely in the in the uh, in the gift as it were let the good times roll enjoy the ride says Carl Harbridge and we got Ollie you need to get a discord sir that I, I looked at discord servers but I think I don't know what is going on with the internet sometimes um I'm on virgin and uh ordered Mac things sometimes it just drops out could be because I'm upstairs in my office rather than uh, downstairs. So I may need to rebuild my house or something. Um, Phil Evans, I don't think it'll be about throwing money around. Yeah, I quite agree there. Um, that's something that's never worked. It messed up Leeds royally. A small club like us would mean the end of us. Yeah, that's it. It's been sensible, isn't it? Um, wolves, were co wolves, we're coming for you. Um Lee Pomlet made a comment about that, about not we're not little Warsaw anymore. But I think let's I think I've got perfect comment here from Carl Harbridge. Evolution, not revolution. Wolves are an established Premier League team. You've got the villa and that there's some massive money going on in there. But if in five years' time Warsaw are in the championship, then Wolves and that maybe we're coming for you. Perhaps. But at the moment, it's um, trying to rescue Warsaw from the depths of the Football League and get us back into League One, where we is our natural home, if you like. And then with the investment pushing towards the championship at some point. But it's certainly, certainly not an easy 
cakewalk, as they say. Um, we are a quality club too, too good for League Two. Well, we need to prove that. We need to prove that, Vince, don't we? But I think the extra funds are certainly going to help. Um, next one, we've got... Um, as long as we go up next season, I think we're in a good position to become a competitive championship side. Yeah, I think in Mike Flynn, we trust. If he gets the players in that he wants, we're definitely going to be competing at the top end of the division. And that was what we are looking for. Maybe um, we might get it. We might just get it. Um, I think they would make our stadium symmetrical. So opposite the home stand, they'll have another tier. Yeah, well, that, that's the first stage of any improvement if Horsell back sort of the upper reaches of League One um, is to mirror the home end for the away end and get more away fans in. Um, obviously, that'll be sort of a big boost to the coffers and that sort of thing. Uh, noob, first month. Signing well, that is one, isn't it? On my, on my, um, on my videos, we've had some transfer rumours, and ones we've had in so far. Whilst we're reasonably happy with them, um, poor uh, Alshin McKenty has got himself injured, but um, Liam Gordon is decent signing, and Peter Clark, I think, is also a good signing, but. I think there's bigger signings linking to my previous my uh, rumours. I think there's some big signings that we've made because they knew this deal was coming. It's been in the uh, it's been in discussion for twelve months. So, and in some ways, people were very surprised we got Mike Flynn. Did Mike Flynn know this was likely to happen? Is that what sort of got him over the line, perhaps? And. Um, some of the big signings that are coming in, we've not heard them yet, but I think they're signed and they've just not announced it. We were wondering why there weren't any announcements when Mike Flynn said he'd got four over the line already and um, Lee Pomlitz said he was surprised. But as he said himself, a bit of a poker player. He was he just playing with me there. He was holding them back and the media team were holding them back. Um, until after the announcement. Because if we signed Norwood and Lemon Evans, people would be saying, where are they getting the money from? But then after the announcement, perhaps that would be, oh, that's the new money. So oops. Um, let's start chasing Vale and kicking them again. Well, if we do get back into League One and Vale are still there, that's uh, almost a guaranteed six points. So good. <laughs> Uh, our problem is thinking we can go the best. Hang on. Let's just get this up on here. This is from uh, Ollie. Our problem is thinking we can go the best. Pomlet thinks we will class every year. Pro tip, expect the worst. If it doesn't happen, great. If it does, you'll expect it. Indeed. Right then. Um, getting to League One. Getting to League One and maybe bring back Sawyer's. Sawyers, I think he's been towards the end of his career. I think um, the new Sawyers, who could that be, is the what we're looking for. Get rid of the posts and secure the roof. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I know what you mean there. Um, be good to get an overall of the bars and the food. Well, we do have a new uh, new beer man coming in, so uh, we've seen the posts on that. So. Um, when is the news of the signings coming in? Well, I did put a message into the media team uh, asking them when the signings were coming. And uh, I got a notification that Paul Juanu, who uh, is the main man, I think, on the media team, he's on a holiday till the 9th. So maybe we might have to wait till he returns. It is strange that he's away for arguably the, uh, the big, biggest announcement for many years. Um, I did get some comments about why I didn't post yesterday, but um, I had a very, um, I had a very busy day yesterday, um, and I didn't get home till sort of like quarter to ten, so uh, it was just research only for me. So, uh, but we're catching up today. Um, Lee's on. He's saying good news and gives Warsaw stability for the future. Absolutely. Um, Adam Walton, American accent, Australian hat. <laughs> Is that? I don't know whether that is or not. It's not a sat 
Australian hats. Australian hats have the bubble, have the corks, don't they? It's a hat. Keep out the sun. That's it. Right then. <laughs> um, I'm starting to think Lemon Evans will join because he would have joined Newport, uh, Stockport by now. Yeah, well, I got a whisper from somebody the Norwood and Lemon Evans had both signed for Warsaw. Um, and with word that Norwood was spotted around Litchfield looking for a house, um, sort of points in the same direction. Um, yeah, Lemon, Ev uh, Lemon Evans, Lemon Evans, Norwood. I think maybe I was wrong on Ryan Haynes because, um, Liam Gordon is probably looking for first choice left wing back. But uh, it's those strikers we need, isn't it? And the goalkeeper, Westwood from uh, Newport, is he going to come to Warsaw? That would be a big challenge. Um, we now, what's Norwood's first name? You should not call me out on that. Um, somebody else tell me because my memory is rubbish. Um, John, James Norwood. I think somebody else will jump in there and confirm that. Um, James Norwood, he did well for Ipswich last season, um, scored one in four for Ipswich last season, and his career he's been scoring one in three. So um, he's a very cheeky chappy um, and would be a massive addition. And uh, him and Lemon Evans, get both of them, um, I can see goals in the team. And I think we've already got a relatively stable back line, assuming we have a goalkeeper. Then, uh, so we're we'll looking good. Um, message here from uh, Jack Anthony Fish. I would presume the media team booked this holiday well in advance. Usually would be the perfect time of the year to go away, but not for Warsaw. Well, perhaps if this deal's been in the offing and I was in the media team, I would be a bit peeved if it's all announced and uh, broadcast while I'm on holiday. But given the troubles that the media team have had, um, maybe uh, Lee Pomnick chose to do it while he was on holiday. <laughs> um, Sadler's Fan TV, he was spotted in Litchfield. Apparently, apparently. I didn't spot him, but um, apparently he was spotted in Litchfield. Right then, so, good news, bad news? I think it's good news. I think we need to be a bit calm about it. It's not going to be instant promotions and Premier League. Um, but it's positive. It's positive, strong ties with a good company. Um, the club and the ground is being brought back and um, under Warsaw ownership, which it should be. Um, Americans, we do like the Americans. They are a fun bunch. Um, so there's a lot worse. And uh, as I said right at the start of this, the solid company and solid people. These people, Ken Polk, very wealthy guy, an established guy. Wendy Hill, great strategic partnerships, Nike involvement. Organisational management, it's perfect stuff. Benjamin Boycott, very savvy guy. He's sort of pioneering sovereign boys. And um, that bridging the gap between professional football and third world sports programmes is when you talk about ethical investments, That that is it for me. That is it. That's perfect. Right then. So um, last one we got. Just don't get your hopes up about this takeover because it's good. Could get the same way as Berry. But I don't know about Berry. Um, I think this future is bright for Warsaw. Um, if you think by comparison, when Wagme took over Crawley, Wagme are basically uh, an in internet sort of crypto company um that is much more dodgy ground i think 
Um, and they're talking about a two-year project. Um, this is a definitely a more long-term feel and much more structured and ethical um, way to go. Um, uh, just for a close, um, yeah, change is um, it's difficult. I think when when you're used to one thing, if the, everything suddenly changes, it does upset people. And um, many people struggle with change. I say for, with my life, I've had multiple changes. And in my job, that is sort of process change and uh, in process improvement is sort of what I do. Um, and people are very resistant to change. People get used to doing the same things. And um, it's quite strange for Warsaw because little Warsaw, struggling little club and that sort of stuff, everybody's second team in the Midlands, pretty much. And uh, how will that view change when Warsaw are not so little anymore and they're on the rise? I think uh, that will sort of upset a few. But, yeah, we need to welcome change. Change is good. Change is good. Um, I think this is uh, I think this is a good change as well. I think this is a good change. Um, right then, going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I will be back probably in two days' time when Paul Joanna gets back on the holidays and starts announcing some of these new signings. And uh, James Norwood, is he going to be the uh, marquee signing that gets announced? And uh, Lemon Evans, perhaps? we we'll wait and see. Who is going to be the goalkeeper? Tenzin touted. But um, I think that's a tough one. He's got a year left on his contract, so we'd be spending money bringing him. So um, I don't know so much. I don't know so much. Uh, can you give a happy birthday shout out to my mate Brandon? Happy birthday, Brandon. Good one. Right then. Thanks very much for watching. The joy. Returning. The pain. Mere memories. Mere memories. <laughs> Cheers. Speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Join the journey. And um, it is going to be a fun ride. Thanks for watching.